Cross wants some cubes, man. I think he wants some cubes. Let's feed some bison. We don't want to run any issues. Man, that's when you get back in the ATV. Yeah. Ah, come on, baby. Hi guys, back at the post office again. Don't show that. <laughs> All right, lots of more orders coming to some Cross Timbers Bison supporters. Guys, I'm so excited. Cole's right here, my buddy. Uh, we're wearing some new stuff coming out right here. Go a little, oh, look out. <laughs> this is going good, Cole. So Cole and I are here. We got a box of orders going out to some Cross Timbers by some fans and supporters. We're super excited. Marissa and I and Cole have been working very hard on getting some new products out to you. We got some new hats, new shirts, and uh, we can't wait for this launch. Cole's rocking his out. He got his a little bit more uh, dirty than, than me today, but Cole actually came up with this design too, so uh, we're super excited about that. Rocking a new hat. Yep, it's looking good. Sweet. <laughs> it's all there. We're excited to bring it to you. Thursday, September 29th, we're gonna start it. Yeah, I really need to thank Marissa though. Marissa came up a lot of cool stuff. And we also have a new flavor of a bison snack sticks as well coming to you. Marissa's actually been picking up a lot of uh, the, some of the new design stuff and the production of a lot of our shirts and hats. Marissa's been doing a bunch of it because uh, we've got some stuff going on in the background. Uh, we really hadn't talked about much, but Marissa may be more involved on some of this stuff coming around the corner here pretty soon. We're going to let you guys know before the end of the year. But we'll tell you about some exciting stuff coming for uh, Cross Timbers Bison. We are out here at the Ponderosa because we're going to do some a couple things a little different. And all of this is getting ready for our fall handling, which you guys know it's always a good time. Maybe not for me, but uh, there's it's always a show for sure. This year is gonna be the biggest herd work we've ever had. We've got over 30 animals to work here at the Ponderosa. That doesn't even include the Dunbar herd. All right, so what we're gonna do today is Cole and I are gonna go visit the yearlings. We've gotta start getting these guys prepared feed them with some cubes. It's gonna be the first time we're doing this really because we don't feed them cubes that often. We're gonna go out in the field, uh, feed them some cubes, let them know what the ranger is and what it has. It's got the cubes because we've got to get them used to uh, coming up here to the Ponderosa following the uh, Polaris ranger and start doing that because last year we ran into some issues getting the bison to come up on working day. So I want them to get used to cubes and the Polaris Ranger. We're gonna do that. Then we're also gonna show you uh, our prescribed burn unit of actually where we're gonna do all the prescribed burn on the 80 acres here in the middle of the Ponderosa that really you haven't seen yet. So can't wait to bring that to you. Been brush hogging a fire line, getting excited for our prescribed burn. And you guys know I'm maybe a little bit of a pyro and I love burning. So can't wait to bring that to you today, guys. Follow us along. The cowbirds are out there. Can you zoom in with that one? That's pretty cool. All of them, they're out there following them. Before we go out in the pasture, I wanted to uh, mention something to you guys. The brown-headed cowbird is back, and uh, I'm a little bit of ornithology guy. Took that class at Oklahoma State, but uh, the brown-headed cowbird has showed up here in the past couple weeks, and uh, it's always good to see this bird. Actually, it used to be called the buffalo bird, um, but uh, they come. Uh, they have a male and female pair that always stay together, and uh, anyways, what's great about these birds is they eat a bunch of insects and they reduce the flies around the bison at this time of the year. And so it's, uh, it's nice to see them here. And, and they'll, they'll follow the bison all day long. And uh, I, I love seeing them out here. It uh, kind of makes like it's, uh, it's fitting the, the whole circle of life. And uh, it's just good to see them roam with the bison like they've been doing for hundreds of years.
Battle of the Flies, take two. <laughs> We can try to get him some whenever we feed him. Gotta mess with him a little bit. Wind's doing the job on flies today, but. Yeah, they are. He's got, he's a little scabby, but he'll be happy to give him some. Oh, let's go. By the way, thinking about getting a cube feeder for the back of this ATV. I don't know if this ATV is big enough or has enough horsepower to put a I need a cake feeder for the back and you can it's remote control that'll be a lot safer feeding these because feeding them out of my truck with the door open or like this is you know with these yearlings it's okay but big joe dunbar and especially when i like to have brooks with me i don't like to bring her in the atv at all so we're gonna work on trying to get a cake feeder in the back of this or an atv at some point maybe if we need that we'll see <laughs> the con this is the poor man's way of uh, feeding cubes. <laughs> but we need to get him used to this, so that's why we're out here. They're used to seeing the ranger, but they're not used to us um, feeding them cubes out of the ranger. They're used to having the Oklahoma Pride feeder. So we gotta get them used to and acclimated to the, to the ranger and to the sack of feeds. Here in uh, a month or two, we're gonna start bringing them up for the working. babies Woo some guy told me to yell at them it's better that way I don't know if bison listen but I'm sure they do they hear that feed sack for sure I do yell at them sometimes well, I mean like, Atkins uses the police siren yeah so that's it's really good. just what's Pavlov's dog whatever what sound they hear Noah whistles Everybody has their own thing. I just rattle the sack. So I'll keep doing this here and there. Just come out, you know, every three or four days, give them some cubes. Plus there's not a lot of grass left. We, we put out a bale of hay. Um, so this is just supplement feeding and it's training them. So we're gonna go get out of the sun and we're gonna fly the drone up. We're gonna take a look at this prescribed burn unit that we're gonna burn here in about a month. Let's take a look. I'm gonna take a couple of photos of it as well, just so we can have all this for the future and the NRCS will need this as well and it will help them in their resources uh, because they are helping Battery level is low. Uh oh, uh -oh to crap Ah oh, crud oh, Drone's gonna die, I better hurry up real quick Ten seconds. Go home. Oh, Don't do that It's a good thing we got this right here I'm flying the drone back and we gotta get it back pretty quick um, cause I'm pretty far out there. I'm over a half a mile away, but I got to get it back and we're going to use the Phoenix 200, get the, uh, drone charged back up so we can keep flying it. But I'm going to pull this SD card out, get our laptop out, make sure it's charging. And uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what I got here and make sure it's good enough while the Phoenix 200 is charging everything up for us. trying to dump it. Woo, about gotcha. All right, well, let's get this thing charged up and let's check our footage, make sure it's good to go. The drone died, been running it for a little while. Drone died, so we're gonna pull it up here on the laptop, make sure we got our footage, make sure it's good enough. Um, and then in the meantime, it's actually charging on the Phoenix 200 by Renogy. So we're gonna let the drone charge up and then it's also powering my laptop while we're out here in the field, camera as well, and it can charge your phone as well. I gotta get this to the NRCS guys I'm working with on this prescribed burn that we're gonna do here in a couple weeks. So I'm gonna check my footage, 
while that's charging. The Renogy Phoenix 200 is ready to power your off-grid adventures. Equipped with multiple output ports, this mobile power station can charge a variety of devices and small appliances simultaneously. You can power six devices at the same time. It's ideal for camping, road trips, photography, remote work, and outdoor activities, or bison ranching. It's got a visible remaining charge time, pure sine wave inverter, four charging methods, a 60 watt USB C port, customizable power settings, and fast charging. This built-in inverter will automatically identify the type of AC load and power most resistive AC loads rated up to 1600 watts. The package includes the Phoenix 200 power station, a CIG to a 5.5 mm DC adapter cable, and an AC-DC adapter. Make your next outdoor activity a breeze with clean, convenient energy from a Renogy Phoenix 200 power station. Conveniently charge the Phoenix 200 through a wall outlet, car socket, or with a solar panel. Short press the power button with Phoenix on to light up or dim the LCD display manually. Quickly check your charging status with an informative LCD display, including battery level, input and output power, and estimated recharging time. When no operation is made for five minutes, the LCD display will go out automatically to save energy. It also has high quality output and quiet operation. Pure sine wave technology provides high quality AC power equivalent to mains power protecting your sensitive equipment, such as a CPAP. Phoenix Camping Generator always operates with low noise so it can be used without worry, even while sleeping. The battery management system enables voltage control, temper control, short circuit protection, overcurrent protection, and more advanced safety operations. Be prepared for blackouts with this portable power station. Charge the Phoenix 200 from 0% to 80% within one and a half hours. Thank you, Renogy, for sponsoring today's video. Meanwhile, this is our bobtail buffalo. So this is our uh, Canada uh, heifer. And uh, she came that way, and I don't know what happened to her, but that's how she made it down here. Good old bobtail. Bobtail bison. Bobtail bison. There's old man. And there's Hoss. Hoss, you're dirty. You need a bath, buddy. There you go. Let's go. All right. Here we go. There it goes. Just taking a look at my fire lines here um, at this 80 acres, trying to get some pre footage of the burn and uh, see what it looks like because there's a lot of fuel in this pasture. There's uh, some cedar in this pasture as well. You can see I'm going around the homestead a little bit, the old homestead that existed, and you can see all my fire lines uh, around this whole property, around this 80 acres. There's a dry pond in there. But it's actually not a full 80 acres because the creek runs through it. And... Um, and we're going to try to burn as much as possible, but I did go, I did brush hog around the entire 80 acres. I don't know if we'll be able to burn the entire 80 acres, but you can definitely see my fire lines of where everything went. Um, it's pretty neat to look at. I'm going to take a couple of photos of it as well. 
just so we can have all this for the future and the NRCS will need this as well and it will help them in their resources uh, because they are helping and uh, we're going to take a look at uh, what I got here and make sure it's good enough Big Joe hanging out in the pond says it's hot it's 84 degrees Big Joe it's not terrible Cross wants some cubes, man. I think he wants some cubes. One of the other things about uh, when you're feeding uh, cubes and you, and you spread them out, kind of like the way I did. Got more animals here, obviously, than the Big Joe herd. But uh, another good way when you do this, uh, you can count them. You can. It's an easy herd check. Um, so you can stand on the ATV or be parked on the hill or whatever, but they're all in line and they're much easier to count. You can do a drive-by and, and count them much easier and make sure you got them all whenever you spread your cubes out like this. So I like doing this as well. But, you know, they can get used to this uh, ATV and, and, and me yelling at them or shaking the feed sack because we don't want to run any issues trying to get them up to the Ponderosa barn whenever we do work them here in a couple months. Um, we're actually planned on working them in early November. So we'll have these 22. We've got 21 uh, yearling heifers. We've got 10 from South Dakota, from Dakota Pure Bison slash Antelope Creek Bison. And then we've got um, 10 more in here from um, Wolverine Bison that are in here. And then my two, I don't even know where they're at. They're kind of dingy. They're out doing their own thing. So, uh, we got 22 for sure. Told you, there's these two hooligans. These are the two yearling heifers I brought over here. And they just, they kind of keep themselves separated. So, oh, they got, got some birds with I think you've trained them, Dusty. Uh-oh. I think it's working. <laughs> they, uh, they're smart. They know. But Just keep rattling right that sack. Yeah. Get that sound going. I was trying to get mine taken care of here so that, uh, so that they'd have some cubes, too. They kind of, these two, like I said, we raised these two, and I, we brought them over here so they, they could grow up with the Canadians and the South Dakota ones. And uh, they've been doing great. They've been doing really well, and they look good. But... They just kind of do their own thing. I don't know. Just, they kind of keep to themselves sometimes. It's weird. Here they come running. They like this. I like this. This works. Ooh. And that's when you get back in the ATV. Yeah. Uh, we're going to uh, stack some hay up, get it out, and move it and get it ready for just winter. Um, I've got it piled up in different places. We're going to get it nice and set.
guys. Just don't forget, uh, today we started a new launch on merchandise. It's right at crosstimbersbison.com. Got some new merchandise for you, got some new hats, shirts, and some interesting other things. And don't forget to check out the new bison snack sticks as well. I want to thank Renergy for sponsoring today's video as well. I was able to charge the drone, camera, my MacBook, all that got it taken care of so we could keep going. Um, but these guys seem to train well, all doing good. I think they responded pretty well to the Polaris and the sack of feed. So little things like this can make a huge difference on your bison ranch and um, small local herds like this. It's easy to do. Um, we're not roaming on a thousand thousands of acres um, out here. So it's nice to be able to do some of this. Thank you guys for watching. Check it out at crosstimmersbison.com. See you guys soon.